You're listening to Feathers, a podcast of stories of women walking in faith. I hope these stories inspire you and encourage you to take flight in your own faith. I'm your host, Amy Bennett, and this is Season 7, Episode 15. Feathers is an outreach of Abiding Ministries. Find more encouragement at abidingministries.net. Well, hey, friend, and welcome to Feathers This Week. Um, This week's episode has been a long time coming because my mom, Diana Weimer, is on sharing today. Um, I was raised by two very godly parents. I'm so thankful for, um, but I am... almost 40 years old. um, And I still talk to my mom almost every single day. We're very close. um, But she has been an incredible inspiration throughout my life. And today I'm excited to share one of the stories that really was a bedrock for me growing up and still is of what it looks like to take a leap of faith. Um, I'm just so grateful for their example. And this podcast definitely sits on the shoulders of their faith. So I'm thrilled today to share this conversation with my mom. All right. Hey, Mom, and welcome to my podcast today. <laughs> Hello back. And I'm I'm kind of excited about being on it, but um, we'll see. Okay. So. What's the percentage of chances you thought you'd ever be on my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> First off, uh, if someone would have said that you would have been doing public speaking or anything like this um, when you were a child, I would have been... No, I don't think so. Not my Amy. Um, or it would have been a miracle, and it is a miracle, I guess. <laughs> and explain to people who don't know me when I was a child why that is. Oh, man. Um, you are the shyest child. When you picture or you see children out on the street and they're hiding behind their their mom or dad, um, very, very shy. That was you. Um I can remember even among people, like we were at church and um, you were going to go up. They used to give out birthday pencils and you had to go up front. I had to go with you and it was painful for you. I can remember music recitals. It was very painful for you. Um, You're just very shy. Um, And that's another, that could be another broadcast about how God delivered you from that. From really, I think it was a very strong spirit of fear. Um, so anyways, it's kind of cool. Yep. So now people get to hear me talk way more than they probably want to. (laughs) (laughs) Um, well, when I see you doing that broadcast, uh, or whatever you call that, that you do in the mornings and it's just, um, it's just so cool to me. So very cool. Yeah. And I love it. And well, you know what is still, and and that's what's what's really cool about technology is I'm, I don't have to go to the front of a room. (laughs) to do that you know like I'm comfortable in my house I know but you know recently how you have gotten up and spoken in front of a lot of people and um, how it just seems to be natural and we know that it's God oh yeah for sure I definitely don't feel like that same person uh, with the fear I mean I do remember the, the like piano recitals my hands would just shake almost to the point where like I couldn't even I couldn't even play um, it was painful for me to watch as a mother. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But here we are. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. So obviously I know all about your family, but the person listening is not going to know. So tell everybody a little bit about our family and what, what you do and your business and all of that. Well, as you know, I have been married to your daddy for 40 years. Uh, we celebrate our 40th this year. Um I was originally um, born and raised in Pennsylvania and um, met your dad. We were right there on kind of like we are here with Fort Mill and Charlotte on the North South Carolina line. We were like that Pennsylvania, Maryland line. Daddy, your daddy was from Cumberland, Maryland, and I was 14 miles over the Pennsylvania line. And um, I have a brother and sister and, um, well, I guess you don't want me to go too far back there we with don't that. Need the whole family tree, yeah, so. we don't need the whole family tree. <laughs> like but I have you two girls, <laughs> you have the two daughters, and then we have the four grandchildren. And I have had a business for the last 32 years. Uh, was a stay-at-home mom when you kids were growing up, and then 
I found a way to work a business, uh, still being able to be at home, and I've just continued with that business. And um, tell us what that's about. I have a Hunter Douglas Gallery showroom and sell blind shades and shutters. Um, And I love it. I absolutely love it. And your sister works with me, has for the last 15, 16 years. And um, occasionally, Scott, your husband, um, does some installs for me. And, of course, your daddy. It's kind of like I say when I have the business, the business is the family. Everybody has to. You've done computer programming for me and. Uh, Caleb, I think, is going to be doing uh, videos for me, <laughs> our, our little <laughs> grandson. Um, but anyways, um, and then I'm very involved with our church and on the council and um, love God and just love being with my family and um, doing things around the house. You know, I love to cook and I love to entertain. That's yes, pretty talk much about me. What you, yes, talk about <laughs> what you're doing this weekend. Like this is even this weekend's a good, a good picture of what you do. <laughs> Well, Sunday, um, I've invited the staff from the church over, um, the staff pastors, and we have seven and their spouses. Uh, so 14, I think there's going to be a couple that aren't going to be able to make it. And then Tuesday night, I'm hosting a, um, a we have teacup ladies from our church. It's a prayer group. Um, and I don't know how many will be here, but, you know, I'm probably 25, 30, something like that. And. I have a few other things um, before Christmas that I'm hosting, and I love every minute of it. So, yeah, you are never going to go hungry around my mom. <laughs> she will make sure of it. <laughs> she uh, she loves to cook for people and and have people over um, at her house, and um, definitely hospitality is something I think I learned from you. I'm not as good at it as you are, but um, we do enjoy having people at our house too. Um, so we have been talking about getting you on this podcast for, I guess, all of the two and a half years that I've been doing it, almost three years. <laughs> we had, uh, so we had my sister Heather on, I guess it's been, gosh, two years maybe since she's. Yeah, I would first. say. Yeah. So. I think it was like broadcast nine or 10 or podcast nine or 10 or something like that. Yeah. From the second season. Yeah. I think it was the second season that fall. So, um. So the story around my sister is really about how God really healed her. She had a sleeping disorder and really an addiction to video games and like how God just really brought her. And we could, I could get your viewpoint on that whole thing and make it an entire whole podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Really. Okay. But give me 30 seconds. Kind of what was that? What was that like kind of hearing, hearing that podcast and her perspective from that? Oh, every time I listen to it, I still cry and, um, I just get amazed at how good God is. And um, I always try to encourage people that I hear, you know, I prayed for 30 years for her healing, 30 years. And God miraculously healed her after 30 years. And, <laughs> and um, that that healing is still holding fast. And um, God is so good. And that was, she's what, 37 now? So seven years ago. Um, but it's still, uh, what all we went through and her sickness and, um, the discouragements that she went through and, oh, just the things as a mother, when you see your kids going through things and then you're walking through them, it's tough. It's really tough. So anyways. Yep. So the hard, the hard thing about doing this was like kind of figuring out what in the world we talk about. Cause we really could go on for like a couple hours talking about all the different, all the different things that um, you guys have really done in faith and you and dad have been a big, um, just been wonderful parents to me and a wonderful example of faith in general. Um, But I have to always point back to, I mean, when I was thinking about having you share, I I always point back to really the beginning. It was really the beginning of my life. And um, so this is a story uh, that I'm involved, that I was involved in growing up and really I think became like a template for what you know kind of taking a leap of faith look like Um, and uh, I don't know it was always just very inspiring to me and it's really the story of how you know you talked about you guys being from Maryland and Pennsylvania and how you know we're obviously in the Carolinas now um, and how you guys moved our family when I was three and Heather was one um, down in the Charlotte area and I don't want to give away any details but uh it was a big move and a big leap of faith and I've just always looked back at that and 
it's just been like just like wow like that took that was hard and it in in a lot of ways um you know continued to be hard it wasn't a quick a quick fix and you know all that so um i think it's a big deal when people move their family especially when it's several states away when they don't know people there when they don't have a job like et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um yeah so anyway, I want you to share that story, uh, and, and we'll probably talk about a little thing. This is a story that I, like, really grew up with. You know, if you think about passing things from generation to generation, well, yeah, this, and is, you, well, this is a big thing for me. Anyway, I know you're trying to talk. My mom is the biggest talker, so I'm trying to get in all the words before she starts talking. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to, I just want to say that your, you know, your dad and I met when I was only 14 and he was 18 and, um, and how we got together was, you know, seeking God, even at that young of an age. And, um, and so we loved, we loved the Lord. We both did. And we both were products of not real good marriages and we both really wanted a good marriage and we wanted to trust God and believe God and, and, um, center our marriage and our life around the will of God in our life. And so let me interrupt. I want to, because uh-huh. I'm thinking about people that are listening that didn't come from good homes. I can say I came from a good home, a good marriage, yeah. parents with a good marriage. So how is it that you went from both of you guys, your parents got divorced, you know, dad's parents, not a great marriage. How do you go from that to you guys, you know, decide from the very beginning you're going to center your marriage around God? That's not the typical kind of response out of that. No, and I've I've thought about it many times, and I don't really know except God's mercy and grace and just my our own wills we willed you know or we said in our minds we we wanted something different and he and i've talked about it before i had my grandparents who basically raised me um and they had a good marriage and they loved god and they served god and i felt the peace of god in their home and so i wanted that and your daddy says that he had a youth pastor well he wasn't a pastor youth leaders um that when they would go to their house it was so peaceful and they were loving to each other the husband and wife and he didn't even know that that even existed because i mean your dad really um yeah i mean there was lots of turmoil in the house lots of turmoil and abuse and and he wasn't abused, but and when I say physical or anyways, it was not good. It was way worse. I remember the first time I went there, I was like blown away. But anyways, he said that he was in a way blown away with this youth. His mother always made sure um, that they were in church and part of youth and, and, and all that type of thing. So he had a really good youth leaders that he saw a good marriage, a really great marriage. And so he knew it was possible. And so he wanted that too. And, um, like I said, we both got saved, um, in our teens. I think he was in his teens. I was like 11 years old, but anyways, um, I, I love, I mean, like I can remember, I mean, at a, at a very distinctly, at a youth camp. I think I was in seventh grade. And I remember it was a Friday night. I can still see myself. And I and I accept the Lord. I had been in church my whole life. Um, but I definitely, there was definitely that calling, the Holy Spirit, um, in my life. And I really felt a complete change. I, like, I really felt like he came in my heart. So anyways, your dad and I, we meet, um, we meet through youth pastors, um, my youth pastor had taken us to his church to meet, um, to go to that church. And anyways, we were young people and we ended up meeting and I'm not going to focus on that. But anyways, we got together. We ended up getting married. I married your dad four days out of high school. I spent my senior year of high school planning our wedding. We got married. So we're very young. 
and that wasn't in common, uncommon at all, um, back in, well, we got married in 1977, so it wasn't like, oh my goodness, that, that was very common. People were just starting to wait till later in life. It seemed like almost like if you were in your mid twenties or late twenties, um, you were going to be a maid the rest of your life. Spencer. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So it really wasn't that big of a deal. But anyways, um, two weeks after we were married, your daddy got laid off from his job and he was a computer programmer. Um, he was working. And so we started out our marriage rough right off the bat, but we always paid our ties and we always sought the Lord and God always supplied everything that we needed. And anyways, we had been married. Well, it must have been four years. And at that time, your dad had been teaching at a Votex school that year. And they never told us when they hired him, he only had a two year degree that he would have to go back to school and get what would be equivalent to a four year degree. And it would be an accelerated program. But at the end of his first year of teaching, um, they informed him that he would have to go to school that summer um, to this accelerated program or he would be he would not be able to return to teaching. And that accelerated program was like two and a half hours away in Baltimore. I believe it's in Baltimore uh, or Washington area. And at that time, we had you um, and Heather, and, um, you know, there was just no way that he could leave us <laughs> this summer. Well, we just didn't have the money. I mean, that was the bottom line. We didn't have the money for him to go down there, go to school. Um, we were we were barely surviving money-wise, and so and we didn't feel peace about it. And Heather was, oh, she wasn't quite a year old yet. Um, I'd say it was in June after your dad was done with teaching. Um, and I had been nursing. And so I hadn't had a break. Um, and we had you. You were almost three. She was almost one. And we'd heard about PTL. Um, and his mother, your dad's mom, had come down and was just telling us how beautiful it was. It was just so wonderful and that, oh, we should go down and visit it sometime. So, okay, so pause. People are not going to know what PTL is unless, like, you're from this area. So give a real quick high level what what that is. Okay. Um, PTL at that time stood for Praise the Lord. And Jim Baker, a lot of people are going to know Jim Baker, the scandal. Tammy Faye Baker. Tammy Faye Baker. um, They had a ministry. And they had a place here called Heritage USA. And they did a live broadcast every day. And um, it was quite a ministry. It's like, and, a camp- uh, it's like a campus. So that's here in our town where we are now. Um, yeah. yeah and well, it was. It was. <laughs> it was. The land yeah. is still here. Some of yeah, the buildings the, are still here. Yeah. But yes. it, was a, it was like a destination area. It had a it water park. Was a, it had a hotel, campgrounds. It was a thriving ministry. There was over 2,000 employees. Um, it was a worldwide broadcast, um, reached a lot of people, a lot of salvations, a lot of healings. There was on the grounds every single day. There were, there were meetings or there were like, it was like church services, um, in the evenings and on the weekends and they would bring the best of the best, um, of, you know, ministers, singers, um, it was just top notch. And I always said, I always felt like it was a Christian Disney world as far as the property. Yeah. The property so this is like, so well maintained. Yeah. Yeah. So this is 81 and Nana sees, sees this on TV. So that's, she sees it on TV, but she also came down and visited it. Okay. Okay. I um, that. yeah. And, um, she was just saying about how wonderful it was and that we should, you know, it just she just went on and on and oh my to to think that her son, you know, just even the possibility of ever working there, um, all this kind of thing, you know, it was just a great ministry, just an amazing ministry. Okay, I never and, knew that. 
I didn't you did. Know, I, I never knew that Nana had come down. And, oh, yeah. And I was going to ask you, how yeah. in the world did PTL even come into the picture? I figured it was from, like, seeing them on TV because of the broadcast, but I didn't know. So, anyway. She and her girlfriends came down. Yeah, her and her two girlfriends came down here and visited. it. And so she knew how amazing it was. Um, so anyways, um, <laughs> your dad and I, again, really had no money. You know, I, I first off, even if he had a normal job, I think any, any couple, you know, typically that have small children, you know, and you've got a home, we were paying for a home, all that kind of stuff. You don't have tons of money unless you came for money. So we were struggling like any young couple would. And so, and we're young. You know, I mean, we're like, well, how old were we? We're like you had me at 19, so you would have been 22 and uh, yeah, 26. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, I think we were 21 when we moved here because we we had birthdays that right, summer. Right, right. We all had birthdays. And so we're young. We're kids. And so we decide, because they had such um, a nice campground, and, I mean, people go camping all the time. And so we said, let's buy a pup tent. And we'll just stay on the campgrounds because we understand the campgrounds. We would see it on TV. You know, they were state-of-the-art, really nice, brand-new bathhouses, um, just a really nice place. So you're so, saying that you decided to come down to visit? Or you're talking about when yeah, you're talking about we just mo- came oh, down, tame we to just visit. Came down okay. to visit. Yeah, yeah. The first time we came down, we were. it was a getaway. That was the getaway that we could afford camping. Okay. So, cause we didn't, we couldn't afford to first off, you know, we didn't know if your dad was going to be, you know, we knew if, if, and he, we'd already decided he was not, um, we didn't feel peace about him, um, going to those classes. And so in, we, we had till September, we had money till September. Cause you know, like a teacher, you get paid, I think he probably got paid, um, I don't know if it was the 12 months, even though he only taught the 9 or 10 months. But anyways, we had the summer to figure out where he was going to work or what was going to happen. And we were just trusting God that God was going to work it out. And he also um, did roofing in the summers. He had a friend from our church that had a roofing company. And so he had all this extra time. Uh, because he didn't go to, to work in the in the summer, um, that he also did roofing on the side. So, anyways, we were we were trying to be conservative with our money and um, not you know not be frivolous and not get a hotel and stuff. So we went and bought a pup tent. Not I'm sure we probably paid like 19.99 or something for it back then, and um, if that much. And so we drive down in our little Chevette that had no air condition. And we arrived down here. We went to the uh, registered and got our little camping spot. And um, anyways, we spent the weekend and we loved it. We loved the area. We loved it was so exciting. It was so clean. It was so everybody was just always smiling. And it's like this Christian like people were here vacationing and it was just like this wonderful, wonderful place to be. And we hated even leaving it. And, um, God dropped it in our hearts about coming down there. And we knew they had a pretty big computer department. And, um, that weekend through that weekend, God dropped it in our hearts, um, about him working there. And so we went back home. And you know how things wear off. And we wondered if it would wear off and it didn't wear off. And we were just really feeling like that's where he was going to work. That we were supposed to, that that was going to be our answer is that he was supposed to come down here and to work and to eventually work at PTL. And so when we went back home, God would confirm it, you know, with sermons when we would be at church and just different things that would happen. And um, so we, I think only maybe a month went by and we drove back down here again. And just to 
you know, really seriously start looking for a job. And um, so your dad and I, I mean, we'd come down on a Friday and leave on a Monday and um, he would put in applications all over the place because he had to get a job. I mean, that was the thing. And and back um, in Cumberland, it was such a depressed area at that point. And, I mean, there were so many people in unemployment, we didn't even know where to even look for a job. And so when we came down that weekend to, to South Carolina, it just became like, oh, that's where you need to go. You need to go there and look for a job. So, you, we But you guys of, didn't know anybody. Nobody. 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 Just, you went on vacation and decided you needed to... Yes, and we loved this area, and we felt like we felt that it wasn't just coming down here to get a job. We felt like he was supposed to work at PTL, specifically. Specifically, at what point for the ministry? For the ministry, right? At what point did you guys start telling family that you guys were? And like, (laughs) what was that? I don't know. Maybe I don't want to open that can of worms. What (laughs) what reaction (laughs) was that? Well, Nana, your dad's mom, she was thrilled. Um, she was thrilled that he would be working for a world-class ministry um, and that that was the, she felt it. She felt that was right. The rest of the family, no, not so much. No, they were not happy about it at all. Um, and Heather and I were first and only grandkids. grandchildren. The only yeah. grandkids at the time through both, yeah. both sides. Um, well, except for I think Kelly... Um, I'm just trying to think. Is Kelly in between you and Heather, or is she right? No, she's she younger than Heather. Okay, so we were definitely, um, well, for my parents, yeah, we're we're going to say only grandkids at that time. So, and um, and tiny, yeah, they were one in three. I keep thinking about the fact that Caleb, that's my sister's son, is exactly is right at the age <laughs> that you took. <laughs> Me, I mean, me and Heather, and I'm like, I would be upset, too. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it wasn't, it honestly wasn't until I became a grandmother 15 years ago with Emma, and you went to Columbia. Yeah, and I, mean, I did you the were same in a thing. nice apartment, and y'all had, you know, and you were only an hour away. I was not a happy camper. And it was a whole different time when we left because, you know. Yeah, keep going you, with your story because I, I mean, yeah, we didn't have to see the picture of how to compare it. So, so anyways, yeah. um, so but we had we had you know we had to do this, and so when it really happened was when your dad got his job. He got a job working in Charlotte, and for us, and you know, honestly, I guess it's just you know how like we've said so many times where God tells you. He lights the next step. He doesn't tell you anything else, but it's like he tells you what the next step or he guides you to the next step and you go to that next step. And for us, it was your dad finding a job in Charlotte and he did find a job in Charlotte. And so um, we made the move, but we knew in our hearts, like we knew very distinctly in our hearts that that's not what we moved down here for, for him to work at that job in Charlotte. We knew that was just a stepping stone or a, a holdover or whatever you want to say until he got on at Heritage USA or PTL. Mm-hmm. So, but we knew we were not making the move unless he had a job. That just was not happening. God was going to have to give him a job for us to move down here. And he did. And so, um, of course, you know, we, our, our spiritual ears were open the entire time, you know, listening for God, you know, confirmations and sermons. And um, I, I could remember um, the pastor back home and him having the sermon, wilt thou go with this man? That was the um, and he was basing it on, you know, when. Um, they were trying to find a, a bride for, for Isaac. And, um, anyways, that was, oh my goodness, it was a confirmation for me because our wedding, um, like on the front of our wedding bulletin or whatever you call that, um, it was from Ruth. Um, you know, wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. 
Um, and, <laughs> and then that was, will thou go with this man? This was all happening. And it just, we had just different confirmations that we were supposed to go. And so anyways, we packed up. Uh, I mean, we, we put our house up for sale. We left all our earthly belongings at that house. We packed them up best we could. But when we set out, it was literally your dad and me and you and Heather, who were one in three, and a pup tent and just enough clothes. Um, and the like house hadn't places. sold. Yeah, the house, the hadn't house sold, had so not sold. So you left sold. everything there. Yes, we sold off some furniture and things like that. But we left the house there and we just knew. We just knew Everything else was working out. The house was the last big key. And we just knew that was going to happen very quickly. I I mean, it was just like, that's going to happen. You know, (laughs) like God's not going (laughs) to, God's not going to take us down a hard road. He's going to sell the house. And we get down here. And that was another thing. Back then, you couldn't. You couldn't get temporary housing. Like, you had to sign a lease for, like, six months or a year at an apartment. And we were like, there's no way God's going to make us, you know, our house is going to sell before six months is up. And we don't want to be stuck in an apartment. We want to buy a house right away. Um, we don't want to do that. We can just, you know, we're just going to stay in this pup tent. I mean, like, Wait, so, go, okay, that's what you just dropped. We're just going to stay in this pup tent. This was. <laughs> For a couple of weeks, for a couple of weeks, because the house is going to sell. The house is going to sell. And, you know, people go on vacation all the time and stay in a tent. Amy, all I know is we were young and stupid. I don't know. And, you know, another big thing was, you know, this, no, actually, this was a big thing for us. God really just is coming to me. And you have to remember, too, because this has been like what? How many years has it been? Years, thirty-six years, thirty-six years. Okay, so it's hard to remember all the details, but it's coming to me now. Um, God also really used in our life in the Bible where they were going from Egypt to the Promised Land, and we felt like this was our Promised Land. And you know, when they set out, they set out with really nothing. Um but pretty much clothes on their back and um, they were just going by faith. They were, they were going. And one of the things that I kept in that story and in that, in that I kept saying, I am not going to complain. I do not want to be in the wilderness for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I will not complain. I will not complain. But I also, we also realized that, It was truly a walk of faith and that, you know, we were going to our promised land. And so it was going to be lean for a little while. So, you know, we get down here, um, you know, we say goodbye to everybody and we leave. We get down here. And, I mean, it was pretty wonderful. I mean, because the place was so. So you're on the PTL campgrounds. We're on the campgrounds. And the fun thing was we weren't the only ones that God had called that way. There was a lot of people that God had called them uh, away from their home and everything they knew um, to to work there. Um, And some of them were living in campers. They weren't living in pup tents. They were living in nice campers. Um, But I know a couple that had like four kids and they were living in a camper. So, you know. That's probably pretty equivalent to us living in a pup tent with two babies. (laughs) So I have, I actually have one memory. So I was three at the time. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's kind of one of those things when you're that young, you don't know if it's a true memory or it's maybe something you've imagined of what it might be like. But I'm pretty sure it's a true memory of you walk. So you'll have to talk about the logistics of how you bathe how we did food yeah i they, so they had bath houses i can say that, that yep on the campground yep. and i remember you I, it seems like i remember you holding my hand and either taking me into the bathhouse or taking me out like i kind of remember absolutely just, like, a glimpse that's of that. not that that really happened <laughs> every day <laughs> yes that we would walk through the woods over to the bathhouse we tried to get camp we tried to get 
spots in the campground that was like close to the bathhouse. Um, because yeah, literally we would crawl out of the tent in the morning. And this there is was a little tiny, table. what six foot pup tent. This is not like well, we were last night. Family or not tent. Last night, the other night when I was telling your daddy that I was going to do this podcast with you, and we were laying in our king size bed. <laughs> you know, and and Could we have fit the tent on the bed. <laughs> and we're just like, I think this bed is bigger than the inside of that tent was. Oh my gosh. Um, we are going to have to pull the tent out one day. We really are going to have to. still we, have we the still tent? Have, we still have the tent. Oh, okay. yeah. We need to pull oh, it out and take yeah. a picture that's, that's for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I do have a picture of your daddy standing beside the, the, the pup tent. Um, I'll have to pull that out maybe here at Christmas time for you to see, too, since now that, anyways. So talk um, about what daily life was like. Oh, okay. So daily life was... Well, when we moved here, it was August 31st, so it was still summer-like here. Um, so it was, it was pretty warm. Um, actually, it could get hot. It could get actually really hot. But your daddy would get up. He would go over to the bathhouse. Um, he says that was one of the worst things. He always felt like his clothes smelled musty. And, you know, back then, computer people wore three-piece suits and shirt and tie. I yeah. mean, they, they wore For suits business. And, yeah. and, and briefcase. You know, and like people at his work had no idea that he had just <laughs> slept in a tent the night before. Um, then he would get up, he would go to the bathhouse, take a shower, and they were nice bathhouses. You know, I mean, they really were nice bathhouses. Um, clean floors, they always cleaned them every day and that type of thing. So he would get dressed, he would get in the car and leave and go, our only car that we had. And I would get up, and I don't remember, you girls never were early morning kids. You know, you were not the 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock wake up kind of kids. You were, you were, thank God, because you know I've never been a morning person. Yes. Um, <laughs> Mom's business opens at 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we get there at 9.30, yeah. yeah. Um, so, anyways, um, when you girls would wake up, we would get up, of course, walk over the bathhouse, go to the bathroom, brush our teeth, take a shower, clean up, whatever. And there were other campers around. So, like, if you would have needed to get up, like, there was a family that lived beside, I say lived beside us, that was camping beside us, that had three little girls. And they were actually camping to, because they were building a house. So they were actually living there So uh, while their house was being built. And she had three little ones. And so, you know, there was times where I'd say, can you watch Heather? You know, why would take Amy over? Amy, you stay here. Why take Heather over? Um, but we would get up. Um, we would buy milk and ice and put it in a cooler every single day because Heather was still in a bottle. Mm. So, um, we you know, life was simple. You, you probably had cereal. We had a lot of peanut butter and jelly. Which and I still love. Yeah, still love. <laughs> if you cut me open, I'd probably bleed beamer and jelly. Exactly. Anyway. Exactly. So, um, and then we would, I would get you girls dressed. And we would go over to the what they call the barn, which is where the live broadcast was. Now, there were people coming from all over the country. I mean, this was... You know, state-of-the-art facility, gorgeous facility, air condition, everything's gorgeous. They had a beautiful nursery there or a, a center for the kids. So you kids would get to go over there. I would take you over there. I would check you in, just like you would check someone in at a church for the 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 nursery mm -hmm. or the preschool or whatever. It was the same kind of idea. And I would check you girls in. And so you would have toys to play with. You would have other kids to play with. And you would have these sweet Christian godly women uh, and men that would take care of you kids. I would go over, watch a live broadcast. The broadcast always started at 11 o'clock. And they were, most of the time they were live on TV, you know, broadcasting all over the world. But you'd have to get there at about 10 o'clock. So... I would check you girls in, and then I would go sit in the studio audience. And I started, you know, you started seeing regular people 
um, there and create relationships and that type of thing. And then the broadcast would be over, you know, right around 12 o'clock. And then they would kind of do, because it was a live studio, then Jim Baker and, you know, sometimes they would talk after the program for a little bit. And then I would go get you and, and Heather out of the nursery. We would get on the trams, just like they have at Disney World. They had these yeah, trams. Yeah, I do remember that. that. I yeah, remember waiting would. for the trams. That They had the little wooden huts that you had to wait at the trams. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And we would get on the tram. And then we would go over. They had the Wagon Wheel restaurant. They had different restaurants. They had a cafeteria. They had different restaurants. And we would go have lunch um, at the Wagon Wheel restaurant, which was air conditioned. And then after lunch, um, we would go back, get our swimsuits. And we'd put you girls um, in swimsuits, and we would go. They had a big Olympic-sized swimming pool, and it was about nap time. And if it wasn't raining outside, now if it was raining, that's a whole different story. We would seek shelter in one of the one of the buildings there. Um, they had the the Grand Hotel, and they had shops inside there. I mean, there was lots of places that I could find, you know, that we could spend the afternoon if it was raining. But if it wasn't raining and it was beautiful out. We would go over to the pool, get in the pool, and then um, lay out on a blanket and under, you know, a tree or whatever. And um, you guys would take a nap. And we'd get a snack. And then, you know, the afternoon would get by. And then um, your daddy would come home. And when he would come home, he would change at the bathhouse. And then we would go out for the evening. We would either, well, depending on when it was. Like once a week, we would have to go to a laundromat and wash our clothes. So that was an evening project. Um, every evening, there was a church service at the, the grounds. Um, and we would attend that just about every night. Um, we would go there. We would be refreshed. Our soul would be refreshed. You girls would be put in the nursery again. Um, and we started meeting people. Um, trying to build relationships, trying to see about your dad getting on. He had put his application, and we were trying to get, you know, people that could maybe pull a string for us or, you know, could get him an interview, and that actually ended up happening. But we were, we did this for, for, for how long? A, oh, well, we were in that pub tent for six weeks. Um, Six and I have weeks to tell you, yeah, yeah, camping six, six, straight six, with two yeah. little kids. Yeah, <laughs> in a pup tent. In a pup tent. I can't even fathom. I even can't even either, and I lived it. So with, <laughs> with my older kids for like a weekend. We're just okay. If you can't imagine, we aren't really camping family anymore. Yeah, and that is um, one thing so I that imagine. I've had enough camping. Like when I hear people getting these luxury. I don't care what it is. I am not going to ever camp again. I mean, yeah. it will have to be God. I've said it many times. God himself will have to speak in a loud voice to me. Diana, you need to go camping because I will never go camping again. Like, oh my God. I, I mean, I may, if Caleb, if the grandkids, I'm, yeah, I don't even think I would do that. No, you, you would go stand at I mean. your Hampton Inn and then you'd meet <laughs> us in the morning. Which I don't blame you. Six the weeks Hilton of two chain. tiny exactly. kids. Okay, so I, you did this for six weeks. What What in the world happened in six okay, weeks? Okay, and so how'd you get out of that? We're now. You have to also. Realize, oh, and your house hadn't sold this whole exactly. Time. You have to realize we're paying a house payment. We have this beautiful home, you know, that we have left, and it was a beautiful home. Um, we have left it. We are paying the house payment. We from the monies of from like furniture that we sold, yard sales that we had. That's what we were living off of, okay? We were living off of that money because we were having to pay a fee for the for the plot uh, where we put our um, tent. Um, and, of course, gas and food were eating out. Thankfully, you know, because your kids were real small, um, we could just get a kid's meal or you could just eat part of our meal. But we ate a lot at... You know, back then there wasn't a ton of restaurants, but I remember like the Sizzlin Steakhouse, um, you know, and certain nights I'd have, you know, certain deals, whatever. We were always looking for, you know, good places to eat, whatever. Well, our cash was starting to get low, too. And so um, 
but again, we were, we were hearing all these sermons and God was always so gracious to give us a word that would keep us going. And we just knew we were, you know, just keep hanging in there. Well, we also, you know, they, they had the upper room that they rebuilt, you know, the replica and there was great prayer warriors and, you know, we had all these great people praying for us and we were like, surely, you know, God's going to hear their prayers if he doesn't hear our prayers and our house sells soon. And we just thought like the whole key was our house selling. So we're in this tent for six weeks. And then the couple that I had told you, the family that was next door, their house, they got done with their house. And one day she, they came over and they said, you know, we don't need this pop-up. It was a pop-up camper. And they said, we don't need this pop-up anymore. We're moving to our house. And, you know, it's not a whole lot, but at least it would be better than the pup tent. Would you want to use? Oh, my goodness. Yes. We were just like so thrilled. We also realized that we were running out of money and that I probably needed to get a job. So... I ended up getting a job as a salesperson at a furniture store and we found, um, we, what is that? Uh, That was my phone. Okay. And we found, um, someone outside of PTO that would babysit you and Heather and the way the hours worked, I would work a lot of evenings. So your dad had you girls Uh, And on Saturday and Sunday. And so we really had to pay for babysitting for two days a week. And so we were starting to get pretty weary and it was getting cold out because now this has been like what mid October. Yes, exactly. And we were talking, you know, we were still going to services at night and all that. And we just kept hearing that there was a freeze on hiring there and they didn't know how long it was going to be before they would even consider hiring somebody and you know we're we're really you know struggling i mean we're living in a pop-up camper we don't have our belongings we're just living out of a suitcase basically um and i'm i'm finding parks to take you kids to you know because you don't have your toys you don't have a bed um you know how pop-ups uh there's there's when that when it pops up one yeah. side becomes like you can make a bed on each side. And so mm-hmm. you kids were sleeping on one side and your daddy and I on the other side. And so we were, we were surviving. And, um, anyways, I can, I will never forget this. Um, your dad came home on a Friday night. It had been, we'd probably been there six weeks. So think about that. Six weeks in the pub. Yeah. Well, no, in the pop up, we'd been there a couple weeks, but I'm saying total, we'd been camping. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, we had been camping probably a good, I think we were in that pop-up two or three weeks. Um, so at this point, we had been there probably at least six weeks, I would say. Maybe eight weeks. Might have been eight weeks at this point. Yeah, I think it was about eight weeks. And your dad came home from work on a Thursday night. And he was so down. I mean, really, really down. And, um, he was just like, um, I'm sorry, this is too much. We were cold at night. Um, we were missing family. We were just all the things, you know, uh, we had heard there'd been a freeze on hiring. It just looked like nothing was going to happen real quick. And, you know, our house is sitting there and, um, he said, I, I'm so sorry. I have brought you and the girls here and I apparently didn't hear God because things aren't working out the way, you know, we thought they were. And tomorrow, um, when I come home from work, we'll just pack up what we have here to pack up. Um, in other words, take the tent down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were in the pop-up camper. So dramatic. We were in the pop-up camper, but, you know, pack the tent. I mean, you know, our suitcases, whatever. It won't take long. But when you, when, when I get home tomorrow night, we'll just pack up the Chevette and, and head back up the road. And I was like, no way, Bill. No way. Um, 
you know, you didn't drag me down here. I came fully willing and I believe, you know, we did hear God and no, it's okay, honey. The girls and I are fine. And, you know, I was trying to convince him. I said, look, you and I love each other. The girls have our love. Um, I mean, they don't even know they don't have their bed as long as they're with us. You know, that's pretty much the truth. You know, if you think about Caleb last night, he just wants to be wherever you are. Like, yeah, yeah. he, you know, babies, they will just, and you would never, believe it or not, you had never complained about where's my bed. No, you know, I mean, really. And three-year-olds um, can be opinionated. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But you were always very content wherever, you know, we were. You were totally fine. And like I said, we tried to make everything fun and like we were on vacation and, um, you know, we sought out places to take you. We, would, we had Monday nights would be Kate's skating rink and we would take you skating. And um, I mean, we weren't living like paupers, you know, it might have felt like it, but I mean, we were, you know, we were going out to restaurants and eat and, and stuff like that. So, and you were, like I said, playing and, and they, anyways. So I said to your dad, I was trying to, you know, make him feel better. And I said, listen, honey, you know, I'm off on Mondays. Why don't you go into work tomorrow and ask for Monday off? And we'll just spend the day together. You know, just the four of us will take the kids to a park and you'll feel better. It'll lift your spirits and it'll be okay. So he went into work the next day. As soon as he got to work, he asked them for Monday off, in which they said, sure, he could have Monday off. And within, I think, an hour went by and PTL called and asked him if he could come in on Monday for an interview. Oh my gosh, crazy. I know, I know. And of course, you know, we didn't have cell phones back then. And of course, he had to wait till after work. <laughs> so he got home from work to tell me the good news. <laughs> and no email, no texting. No email, <laughs> nothing. And nothing. you don't have a phone in the pop up, so. <laughs> And see, I think that's what was so hard on both of us, too. Um, we we could only call home, like, maybe once a week because it was 25 cents a minute. Oh, my gosh. 25 cents Can a minute. Can you imagine hearing from, like, Heather and Matt once a week with the baby in a pump tent? I mean, I'm just trying to, like, imagine Well, I, that's why oh. we laugh because we literally would get on the pay phone, put our coins, you know, uh, in and that type of thing, and then the mothers i mean we would literally have to put the phone like three feet away from our ear because we would be getting it how are my babies how in the world are you doing it what in the world do you do when it storms and it's lightning and what do you do and how are they and what are the and what are the and i mean oh i can't like, imagine the anxiety <laughs> i don't blame I know, them and i'm laughing because it's not funny but it's it's so ridiculous i mean like like I said, I lived it and I still laugh because I'm like, how did we do that? Like through the years. And you would hear bits and pieces of the story because it would just be like, all we would do is laugh about it. Yeah, we lived in a tent because I just like, how did we do that? How did we do that? Um, but we did. Okay, so and Monday then, gets there. He has an interview. And they did all six interviews that day. Mm. which from people that we had talked to that said that was unheard of, that was impossible. They just never did that, but they did. They did all six interviews that day. Um, he left there feeling very, very positive. And I think just a few days later, they called him and said, you know, he had gotten the job and he worked out a two week notice at his other job. So the other really cool thing. So I think at that point we'd been there two months. And, um, the very first day, um, that he went to work during the day, um, a big streamliner, those are those silver looking back then that was the ultimate kind of camping gear. <laughs> yes. And a nice big one moved into the pad right beside us. 
and that was just like, really? I mean, I had been, you know, at that point, like, really? You have to show off your camper right beside me? <sighs> and I was not happy. <laughs> and it was nice and new and, you know, all this stuff. And it just, you know, and I'm in this little pop-up. And, and so your dad comes home from work. And he says, did you notice the streamliner that moved in next? You know, like, yeah, yeah, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I did. He goes, well, they happens to, you know, be a couple that um, he went home at lunchtime and got it and moved it there. They're a couple that I met that's my coworker. And I need you to come over here and meet them. Well, I was like, okay, but I was kind of in that mom mode, you know, we're going skating tonight with the kids. We need to get our dinner. We need to get these kids, you know, we need to get in the car, go to the restaurant, and then take the kids skating. And I'm like, Bill, we don't have a lot of time. And he's like, come on, come on. And anyways, back then, you know, your dad was super shy. And so the fact that he was excited about going to talk to somebody was kind of intriguing to me as it was. And he was very enthusiastic about it. And you've got to come over here. And so we go over there and inside their camper, it's like showroom, like, like it's clean. And I'm like, where is all their stuff? And so we just chit chat for a while. And I'm kind of like, come on, honey. Well, I, you know, it was really nice meeting you, but we got to go. And so, and they're all like in this happy mood, whatever. And so we get out, we're walking and I'm trying to rush as I know you can picture me trying to rush and like, <laughs> let's get on with it. Your dad says, they're giving us that camper to use. And I'm like, Bill, I am really not in the mood for your humor. Ha ha. Come on, let's go. And he's like, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm serious. They're, letting us use it and I still didn't believe him and so he actually starts picking up stuff in the camper the few little long belongings that we had and he said well if you want to stay here that's fine but <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'm going over there I'm moving over there and that's when it really like then I I think I started crying and you know kind of falling to pieces like really seriously those people were complete strangers to them and they're going to just like let us use it. And I mean, it had a bathroom. It had a kitchen. So why are they not using it? Why are they randomly parking it beside you guys? Well, they had it at home when, when your dad went to work and he started meeting people and they were kind of like, you know, when he's like, yeah, I moved down here. He was kind of telling them their story and like, we've been camping and, you know, we've been in a pup tent. Now we're in this little pop up and, you know, it's getting cold at night and stuff like that. And this guy's like, well, I got one sitting at home in the driveway. You can just use it. Oh, my gosh. I'll just, I'll just go home at lunchtime and go get it and park it and get a spot for you and, and park it. Um, and that's what they did. I mean, it was his very first day of work. That's the kind of incredible people um, that we met that were just giving, loving um, got it. They understood the call of God. They understood that, you know, um, you just kind of, you know, go through rough times and you help your brother and your sister, you know, you help them. Um, so how long were we in that? That was about three weeks. And then it was so cold and the heat in it was so dry that we literally would wake up in the middle of the night choking because our throat was so dry and we were just like this isn't working so then someone else your daddy was working with a young couple that had a baby they said you know we have an extra room come come stay with us and so we went there and stayed for two weeks and then then his boss at work said um we're we're going to california to see our our children and we're going to be there for a month would you like to stay at our house? So we went and stayed at their house the whole month of December. I was going to say, this has gotten to be around December. It is. So we were little gypsies. I was going to say, it um, sounds like we, I didn't think I even knew all of those hops, those people's houses and stuff. 
No. So how, at what point did the house, I mean, this has been, what, three months now, the house hasn't sold. So at what point, because I know we ended up in an apartment, but I don't know, how, how did, when did the house sell and how did we get to the apartment eventually? Well, um, after, you know, after we were in that house and it felt so good to be in a house and it felt so good to have a washer and dryer and, you know, feel human again, um, and the house still hadn't sold up in Maryland and, and it wasn't looking like, I mean, it was like times were really hard back there. Houses weren't selling really well. And we said, okay, enough of this gypsy living, um, Let's get an apartment. So we we rented an apartment. We signed a lease for six months, and um, we went back home and got a U-Haul and brought down our belongings and um, moved into a two-bedroom apartment. And I know we're probably going to run out of time here or whatever. I don't know how you're going to do this, but we've been talking a long time already. But anyways, um, we ended up, Moving in that two-bedroom apartment, we stayed there for about six months, and then we moved to a three-bedroom because um, it was looking it was looking much more permanent. And we had kind of resigned ourselves to the fact that we didn't know when the house was going to sell. We we finally like succumbed to after a year. It was kind of like okay, we just need to make ourselves comfortable, whether the house sells or it doesn't, and we need a three-bedroom. So we went to a three-bedroom apartment. Um, and I think we didn't get a three bedroom apartment to begin with because they didn't have one available. And so during this time, okay, because it took two years for our house to sell. That's the bottom line. And so during this two year period, we are struggling. I mean, we are really struggling now. Dad's working at PTL, but we're paying a house payment and we're paying for living expenses. And the apartment, um, yeah. And the apartment. And, um, you know, we, there would be months where we didn't know how we were going to get the money. I mean, it was really scraping it. And we were also paying power bills and, you know, it's up north. So the winter time, you know, the power bills are really expensive. And so then we did eventually rent the house and whoever rented our house, he ended up buying our house and that's how it en- en- ended up selling. But during that time, um, God just did so many amazing things. Like when I look back, I wouldn't change anything because in all that, God taught us. um, One of the things that your dad and I were frivolous about was giving money. We were kind of like we would give our 10 percent. Sometimes we would give 20 and 30 percent of our money. We were just kind of like, oh, we'll just give this and, you know, God will bless it and God will, you know, he's, it's going to come back, you know, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, you know. And it was kind of like that mentality of, um, because things were so screwy at that point in our life because our house hadn't sold and we're paying stuff. And let's say, I'll, I'll give you a for instance, let's say the power bill is $150. And we don't have $150. We know that the power bills do on Tuesday. It's $150. And we have $100 of it, or we have $125 of it. Um, and so on Sunday, we're at church, and, you know, they're asking for extra offering or whatever. And we're just like, well, we may as well give $25 of this $125 we have because we have this money in our hand um, and God will multiply it so that we'll have the $150. <laughs> I'm laughing because now I'm like, Oh my goodness. So we had this, it, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't a balanced, correct way. And I know there's times where God asked you to, to do things like that, but this was kind of a standard for your dad and I that we were just, you know, give the money, just real givers. And anyways, with him working at PTL, they also had sources of, you know, they had accountants and they had people that would help. And, and his boss said, you know, I've got this guy, Lowell, that, you know, he helps people with their finances and everything. And, you know, I'm going to set up for him to, I guess they paid for, for what it would have cost to normally do that or whatever. And, 
he met with us to see if there was anything that we could tweak in our budget, if there was anything that we were doing wrong. And Lowell, you know, said, you guys are just like, you literally are doing everything I, I know that you could do. But he said, you should not be giving offerings during this time where you don't have the money. Um, and he may not have said it that plainly, but he said, you, you, you don't need to feel guilty, you know, if they're really right. asking you for owe money. People. Because you owe people. Right. And he said, you need to think about the fact that how's, what kind of witness is it going to be to the telephone company? What kind of godly witness is going to be to the telephone company if you go, hey, I can't pay this bill, but praise God, I love Jesus. Um, and so God was merciful to us. I, I don't think we ever really shamed, you know, I mean, like we, our bills were always paid. It was amazing that the money somehow always came in. But once we learned, you know, that God wanted us to be good stewards with 100% of our money. And that, and all that being said, I don't want it to take it weird. You guys still give. I mean, that is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, giving is definitely over, yeah. a, a principle that I know I grew up with. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I, but there is I a proper say, way to do it. Exactly. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I believe that I'm talking about over and above our 10%. We right, were right. just kind of that mentality. It, it just was what I'm saying. I guess what my bottom line, what I'm trying to say is, that two years where our house didn't sell and we kept saying, you know how you think the answer is if the house would sell, if the house would sell, everything would be okay. If yeah, the house your would way, just you're going to solve it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But we would have not have learned the things we would have learned in that two years had the house mm-hmm. sold. Mm-hmm. So by the time the house sold, we didn't really, it, we really didn't need for the house to sell because we had straightened out our finances. Um, you know, there was a lot of things that God taught us mm-hmm. during that two years. And I'll tell you, one of the things he taught taught us, it's kind of a side thing, is we had, like, there was two times where the 700 Club, they paid our house payment for us. Oh, my goodness. I never heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was people that helped us because they knew we were doing all that we could do. Like, we weren't being frivolous with our money, you know. I mean, we were... We were doing all we we were paying our tithes. We were going to church. You know, we were trying to live a godly life. It's just, you know, our house wasn't selling. And so, um, anyways, people helped us. And I really learned, you know, you have to humble yourself to receive from people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some people that just won't receive help. You know, they refuse to they see that as a weakness and there's no way they're going to take help from somebody so there was just a lot of things and i learned that life can happen you know that i mean the we didn't know that i mean the they called it a recession back then the recession was happening and because of the recession our house wasn't selling Mm -hmm. so you know we really couldn't control that is what i'm trying to say you know things were happening in the world around us that kept us from being able to sell the house. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, we, we made it through after the two years and then, um, but it was, it was definitely a very trying. And like I said, we were each step was like when we would get down, you know, we, we'd go to church and we'd listen to the sermons and we'd get in lines and have people pray for us. And we would go to, meetings in people's homes and, you know, again, just praying and just, you know, Lord, help us to do the right thing and where should we be and are we at the right place? And, you know, and thank God we, we listened and we did step out in faith and, and through all of it, he taught us. And, um, and like I said, I still look back and laugh because I'm just like, God, it had to be you because I don't even know how we did that. Like, I don't know how we did that. Yeah, I don't either. And I lived it, I guess. (laughs) You did. It's it's kind of, as you're talking, it's like you're talking about somebody else, but I was actually kind of like going along. You're talking about me. It's so weird. It's I don't know. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you didn't, you kids, you did not suffer, you know. 
You were taken care no. of. And but that being said, I mean, I still think, and, and I think the important thing about all of this is that just because, and, and I've said it so many times on this podcast, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not it, God. Exactly. And still, even I'm, you know, this is how we said 36 years later. And for me, even being away from my extended family has been hard for me. And that yes. still continues even so many decades later. Oh, um, yes. And there, and even in God's hard. will, I just, and you don't even know this, Amy, I just talked to a good friend in the ministry just before this broadcast. And she's our age. And God is sending her to Montana, her and her husband, in ministry. Mm. And she's a southern girl. That's, I don't even know where. I couldn't even pick Montana out on a map. I'm sorry if there's any <laughs> people from Montana on. on and she husband. is my age with grandchildren, you know. But God is calling, and they're excited about it because they're going to be doing God's will. That's where they feel God has called them. And no matter what God calls you to, um, there is going to be the downsides to it. There is just no doubt about it. And. I think one of the, the scriptures that I never, that I, that, that we lived off of, um, literally, and I, and I should have brought this up earlier in the, in the, in the podcast, but the scripture that we, we really, really lived off of when I would get really discouraged and it would come in, it says Joshua 31, 7, 8, be strong and courageous for you shall go with this people into the land which the Lord has sworn to the fathers to give them and you shall give it to them as an inheritance. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear and do not be dismayed. Um, and then in Joshua 1, 9, it says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so <laughs> there was lots of times we were, you know, in feeling dismayed, you know, and feeling discouraged and feeling down. And he'd say, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. And that was so encouraging to me. It was like, as long as I'm in God's will, it'll all work out. And you know how many times I've, I've basically preach that to you you know just right right be in god's will just be in god's will just know seek god's will because you can't life is up and down and and god has i mean you know like we've said before there's all kinds of testimonies and there's all kinds of stories in our story and and some of them aren't so pretty and it was really hard times but god is so faithful and he is with us and he proves that he's with us and he gives us peace and joy and, and all the wonderful things that come with serving God. And so, um, but walking in the ways, you know, when you accept the Lord, that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm never going to have it bad again or I'm never going to go through a rough time. No way. No way. But in all of this, you know, obviously the spiritual side, um, but he has blessed you and dad. And oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, as far as, <laughs> yes. you know, I think about the ha people don't know the house you're in. It's just a beautiful house. And, you know, just you talked about how you're hosting so many people, you know, dozens of people this week yeah. in your house. And, and it's kind of like a kind of full circle, you know, people offered you their their homes and and now you have a beautiful. Oh, we have definitely kind of found our promised land. I mean, for sure. I mean, we definitely um, we were through it all, in it all, whatever, um, you know, he, he was with us and, and, you know, we're so glad we, we did it, but there are downsides to it. Yes. We're not with family and we're, you know, um, and for a long time it was, it was really, really hard because I felt like I'd been dropped into a foreign country. Um, I didn't know anybody and it was a different way of life and, but anyways, yeah. All right, Mom. I think we did it. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So, I love you. I Thank love you. you too. Yep. All right, honey. Okay. Bye. Bye.
Oh, my goodness, guys. I wish we had a few more hours to share kind of the rest of the story. Um, and quickly, I'll just say that dad worked for PTL uh, in the hotel um, in computer programming for several years. Um, I have lots and lots of memories as I got older of being on the grounds uh, in different buildings as we visited him at work. And I was in the hotel, the Grand Hotel. I remember seeing Jim and Tammy Faye Baker um, kind of behind the scenes there. And I remember the pools and the restaurants and uh, so many things that I visited as we lived close by. Um And so many good memories for me. And as we all know, or maybe you don't know, in the late 80s, things took a turn for the worst uh, with the Bakers. And uh, that all eventually shut down. Um, And of course, many look back on that and see that it's very negative. And oh, my goodness, it is very negative, to say the least, what happened. But I can tell you that for many, many years, it was a place full of happiness and joy. And it was used for good. Um, Dad went on to get jobs in the Charlotte area. And by the time I was five, we were in a house in Fort Mill in the same city that um, both my mom and I live uh, in now. Um, The grounds of PTL are are actually still about 10 minute drive from our houses now. And much of that has been torn down, um, converted to other businesses, or a lot of it has been, um, a lot of housing has been built on those grounds. But anyway, the thing that inspires me so much is that my parents truly moved uh, from up north to the Carolinas by faith and stuck through the hard times to obey and just to trust God. And I'm just so thankful. And yes, it's hard, but the lessons they learned along the way and what I learned uh, through their obedience is just priceless and I would not have it any other way. And I am so, so thankful. So, guys, thank you so much for listening. I know that one was a little bit long. Um, We just have one more episode for season seven. I can't believe we're going to finish that out. Um, But thank you guys so much for listening. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram uh, at Abiding Ministries on both of those places. Um, Appreciate you guys listening. Thank you so much. And we will see you next week on Feathers.